Welcome back to The Sex Talk. My name is Mo and I'm your host. Um, I'm a sex therapist and today I would love to chat with you all about vaginal lubrication and arousal. sex talk. So I wanted to do a post on vaginal lubrication as well as lube and arousal. So we, I think we live in a society where it is assumed that the wetter some, the more lubricated somebody is uh, down in their vulva, their vagina, that that equates to arousal. Well, this is where the mind and body aren't always connected, um, number one. Number two, our body creates lubrication for other reasons other than arousal. Um, for example, when women are experiencing rape, for example, sometimes they do experience lubrication because that's their body's way of saying, ow, this hurts, let me assist the body in creating something that will make this a little bit easier. So that's, you know, I think that is sort of the evidence right there that even when women are not aroused, they might be lubricated and wet. Also, the reverse is true. Women may be extremely aroused and not experience wetness or lubrication. And that is extremely normal, and I can't help that, but to emphasize that vaginal lubrication is not necessarily a sign of arousal. Similarly, with, with male erections, you know, we talk to a lot of men and they will be aroused and their penis is not hard. They're not having a, an erection and so it's hard to imagine that they might actually be aroused. Um, if a man has an erection, it's assumed that he's aroused, but actually he may not be. So this video is just to remind you that our bodies and our minds aren't always in sync when it comes to, you know, it's not even that they're not in sync. It's just that we have this false idea about what lubrication and erection really means. We've come to assume that lubrication must mean that she's turned on and that lack of lubrication means she's not turned on and that an erection means that he is turned on and lack of erection means he's not turned on. But I'm here to tell you that arousal happens a lot of times without her being wet and without him having an erection. For, for women when they are not wet, um, one really, really awesome solution is lube. And lubrication, buying lube, like bottles of lube, cans of lube, jars of lube, and keeping them by your bedside is a really smart thing because lubrication can also help with uh, masturbating. Lubrication can help with something as simple as inserting a tampon. Um, you know, some if it's dry, if you're, if you're, the entrance to your vagina is dry, then it's gonna make it hard to insert a tampon. It's gonna make it hard to insert a sex toy, insert some fingers, insert a penis. So having some lube on hand is a really, really great idea. If you are in a monogamous relationship or I should rather say a fluid bonded relationship. Fluid bonded means that you and your partner share fluids and you either are getting tested regularly or you have a an agreement to not sleep with other people. So you're fluid bonded meaning that, or if you do sleep with other people, you're using protection with those other people, but together you're not using protection. So those 
those partners that don't use protection together are fluid bonded, hopefully consensually, hopefully with a lot of communication around whether or not they are sleeping with other people and if so, if they are, um, that they're using safety and hopefully the partners are honest and using using safe sex if they are having sex with other people while being fluid bonded with someone else. The reason I bring that up is if you are not using condoms, all of that to say that if you are not using condoms, one great way to have lube on hand all the time is coconut oil. Um, Trader Joe's, believe it or not, shout out to Trader Joe's. <laughs> They sell these little travel packets of coconut oil. I kid you not. Coconut oil is so good for so many things. I use it in my hair. I have really prematurely aging dry hair. Um, I use it for like body lotion. I use it to take off makeup. Um, I can use it as a lip, um, lip gloss. And I've actually used it as lube as well. Um, when I was traveling with my partner, who I am fluid bonded with, we were able to use coconut oil because we forgot lube. And do not use coconut oil with a water-based, um, sorry, with a latex condom. It will potentially damage the condom. So if you're using a latex condom, you're trying not to get pregnant, you're trying not to get an STD, you're trying not to spread HIV, then you really want to, you're using a condom for those purposes, you're not fluid bonded with your partner, do not use coconut oil. There are water-based lubes that are really great to use with condoms. And I have my favorites. Um, I per particularly like um, a brand called Sliquid. Um, and um, there are several other ones that you can find. Um, just go online to goodvibes.com or Pleasure Chest, and they will, those are my favorite sex toy companies there because they're sex positive and they do a lot of education. And you can buy and peruse all manner of lubes. When you use a lube, um, and you're using a condom, opt for a water-based lube because the other types of lube, the silicone-based lubes or oil-based lubes um, can potentially damage the condom. So, um, and water-based lubes are great too. I just brought up coconut oil because I thought, um, you know, we were talking about tampons, inserting tampons, um, inserting sex toys, um, you know, inserting fingers. Um, coconut oil is a great lubricant when you are not potentially combining it with latex. So just wanted to throw that out there. The main point of this conversation, though this video, is to, to normalize the use of lubrication during sex, during masturbation, during so many reasons we might need to you know, insert something. Your, your, your gynecologist uses lube before they stick that latex hand up into your vagina. So they're probably using a water-based lube. But just, you know, to tell you that it's really, really normal to be dry and to not be lubricated, even though you feel aroused, even though you really, really wanna have sex with your partner. It's especially normal for women to be dry because of hormonal shifts. Um, that time of the month, um, if it's if you're if you're not ovulating or you're not bleeding, there's a high likelihood that you might be dry. Um, women that are experiencing perimenopause or menopause, you are very likely to have a lot of dryness. Um, so stock up on the lube, lube it up, lube it up, lube it up. I can't stress how important it is for you. It'll make it feel better. It will soothe itchiness, dryness, all of that thing that occurs with aging, with hormonal shifts, different times of the month. I can't tell you the importance, I can't stress enough how important it is to incorporate lube into your well-being, your sexual health, um, your lifestyle. 
Um, if you need more um, suggestions for lube, definitely check out the stores I mentioned before, Good Vibrations and Pleasure Chest online. I'll put the links down below as well. Um, and just remember, you are not this button that turns on like every time like you're supposed you you're you're in a relationship oh we're supposed to have sex now you don't automatically lube up some of you might lube up even when you're not aroused so it goes both ways right some people are extremely lubed up and some people have a harder time with it so go easy on yourself um enjoy sexuality enjoy the ebbs and flows of your desire and your body and stock up on a lot of lube. That's it for today. I'll talk to you everybody soon. Take care. Bye. The Sex Talk. The Sex Talk.